wrap up. Our next guest is the president and CEO of, yes, Amiga Incorporated. The Amiga lives on. Today we're talking about why uh, the new Amiga stuff can literally go just about anywhere. Bill McEwen joins us once again. Good to have you back, Bill. Thanks, Leo. Good to be Amiga's here. still alive. We should just say Absolutely. briefly the history of this is it was owned by Commodore. Right. Uh, the Tramiel guys just killed it. Had a great time. Yeah. Had a great time. In the Bahamas. Boom. Right. And, uh, and then, then what happened to it? Uh, then it went to Germany. A company called Escom bought all the Commodore assets. It was a huge seller in Germany. It was. And if, if, all over Europe. Right. So Escom said, hey, there's a, there's a business here. Right. They bought it. They sold all the Commodore assets to Tulip Computers in right. Holland, kept Amiga. Two years later, the same thing that happened in Computerland here, happened to Escom there, bankrupt. <laughs> So in 97, Gateway bought Amiga's assets, right. brought it back to the States. We thought that was a big deal. We thought maybe yeah. Gateway's going to do an Amiga PC. Well, we were hoping because they hired me in 97 right. at that time. And then in 99, with the change that happened at the hierarchy, Ted leaving, etc., right. they decided to get out of the business. And so uh, I said, well, I want to buy it. You spun it off. I did. We bought it. So what is Amiga these days? Is there an Amiga PC? Is there something I can take home? Yeah, actually, there is. We still have the classic line, the A1200, etc. Still being made. Still, well, no, just what's left in Existing stock. Existing ones. Those are okay. done. 68K uh, series chipsets. Okay. We have a brand new Power PC product coming out called the Amiga One. We've now shown that for the first time in England. What OS is that going to run? That is running Amiga OS 4, the next awesome. version of the Amiga desktop operating system. Awesome. And that's a PowerPC-based system. Okay. We also have two other companies now taking the Amiga operating system, create an x86 emulation layer, and we now have Amiga for the x86 Oh, also. that's exciting. Now, you've been working with a company called Dow in England. Yes. And this is a really interesting technology. We're going to show this. How does this, what, how does this relate to what you just told me about Amiga? What we're doing is the Amiga desktop platform is, is well covered. We've got many tools. There's 40,000 plus applications. Yep. What we want to do is expand Amiga with the idea that all digital content should be available on all digital devices. So you're making a virtual machine? What are you doing? Have no, what we've done is we've hooked up with the Dow Group in Reading, England. Okay. They have a product called Intent. We've taken their kernel, which, interestingly enough, started on the Amiga platform. Chris Hinsley, the founder of Dow, started creating an Amiga gaming engine that would allow Amiga games to run on numerous different devices. Okay. That became Intent. Okay. So we've licensed that technology, and we've now created, if you will, the Which built one the engine I run transmission. Here? Click on Planet Z. That's my son's favorite game. Yeah. Okay. okay. Should have worn now, my glasses. Which one's right. Planet Z? Uh, let's see. I can fly around here. So first one over here in the corner. Oh, right there. That one? There we go. That one. There we go. Click that one. Okay. Now, what you're going to see here, this is our most popular game. Mm -hmm. There's currently 3,000 developers who've purchased the SDK and created this content. Now, what you're seeing is this game is loading up. Now, this is, this is the size of a pocket PC. Yeah, that's a, that's a QVGA screen resolution okay. there. We're going to play the game. We're going to play the game. Now, now while the game's playing, this what we've cool. done is we've created now dynamic scaling capabilities. There you go. So the game can scale from any single device. This is while it's playing, folks, which is kind of really neat. So what you yeah. have is the same tech, so the exact same binary that will run on any of these handhelds here will also run on desktops, set-top boxes, etc. Can I get this now? This is you have a bunch of games that come with it. Oh, that presume other software could run on it. Absolutely. This is for Windows. Is that available now? It is available now. From Windows and Linux are available now on okay. our website, and everything. Sixty-seven titles available now. Just briefly, so I understand what's going on. The game is written in some sort of generic code. Right. You either C, C plus uh plus, -huh. or what our native language we call VP, virtual processor, and then compiled down to RISC-32, which is a, kind of a, a virtual processor. Correct. And then you write little translators for all the different platforms that translate RISC-32 exactly. into, in this case, a, 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 an Intel chip. But we can do the same thing on Pocket PC. Exactly. What we've done here, this is a Pocket PC. This is the old version of Pocket PC. Okay. This is running a MIPS processor. So let's turn it on. Let's I'm going to tilt it up here and see if we can get, get it on. Now, there. what we're going to do is we're just going to plug in this compact flash device. Okay. And in a moment, it'll so read the content. In the memory, there it is. And the same games are on here. Right. The exact same binary. And they play the same. Yes. Well, that's very cool. Now, if we and that's because the binary doesn't have to be recompiled. That's because you've got the right. little translator there. Exactly. The same thing on a Pocket PC 2002? Right, 2002 and... Here it is. There we go. Okay. I'm sorry, we didn't get didn't over there I scare yet. you, Greg. Ah. All right. Let me pull the compact flash out of this Wait one. Wait a minute, you're going to take the same, same card? Con you can't because it's yes, different... Uh, no, no, no. We're going to plug it in. That. That's okay. Here we go. <laughs> this is the MIPS processor. This is a different processor. Right. This is a strong arm processor. I'm sorry, we'll turn this around for Greg. So, a, a oh. different processor, and yet, because you've got that translation, so the translation layer lives inside the RAM of the, uh, of the device. Here, Here we go. Start Planet Z. Where is it? Planet Z is right. Can you see there. it? I can't see it. Very there it is. Well. It'll come off the some blind flash. flash. So, that's going to load in off the flash, and right. it's going to be exactly the same game we saw on Windows. In fact, the same binaries, yep. but they're being translated. 
uh, with that, that little. How big is the how big is the uh, translation layer? Uh, on each device, it's about 16k. It's tiny. Yes. And fairly efficient. There Very efficient. I'm gonna click my. There you go. I'm sorry, I'm putting big fingerprints over your uh, right. system. So, what devices currently are we uh, are we able to run this on? Well, right now we're on the desktops, and in April we'll be launching the Amiga Anywhere platform. That's why we're That's here what at you're ESC. Calling this Amiga Anywhere. Right. And so you would go and you would buy something like this, which is a game pack. The neat thing about this is you just have to get the right media shape. Right. If it's SD, do you have it on SD? We have it on SD, we have it on Compact Flash. It also can be preloaded directly on the device. You don't need a Compact Flash. So I could flash. download it. You can download it. Okay, well, you have offered downloads from the website? Absolutely. I'm going to steal one more thing Look here. Look at this. He's pulling. I think okay. that's really amazing. That now, you this can play that. is Linux. This is the Sharp uh, device, yeah? Right. This is the Sharp SL5000 okay. running uh, Linux. The can you launch Linux. it? Uh, yep. uh, I don't know how to do it. There we go. I'm Again. not very good with Linux. Again, same binary. That's really neat. And there it is. Launch Planet Z. Let's see if it Let's works. See if get, uh, Zed. Where is Zed? Can Where's you see Zed? It? I can't see it. Sorry, as we're blocking the camera. How rude it was. There we go. That's There's okay. Zed. And there it is. And that's the same one that was running on all these other ones. Right. The translation layer. That's that's the kind of thing they're doing with a cruise chip, basically. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, and a hard, and hardware software, right? Okay. You're we're, doing this in software. We're all doing all software. In software. Wow. So the really idea neat. is that any any Amiga content can be run on any digital device. And what we're doing here, at I ESC like it US, that it was yeah. also automatically scaled to the screen Absolutely. size. Absolutely. Whatever whatever the native screen is, you're going to be able to get that full resolution. How, what's the highest resolution right now? Oh, uh, right now it's 640 by excuse me, 1024 by 768. Right. And, and then can you go higher? We will be going higher. In fact, all of our 3D stuff, etc., will all use the exact same uh, layers, so we can go on any device. The thing I think is neat about this is it's very fast. It feels very fast. It, you don't, is. it has to be obviously to play this kind of Twitch games. Yeah. Um, a neat idea. So this is one more way Amiga is staying alive. Absolutely. Ultimately, what you, the benefit is you can port all of these products over to the Amiga platform. Exactly. You've got ready-made software Absolutely. for the new Amiga OS. 4.0 is going to be out when? It'll be out. It's supposed to be this summer. Okay. It's already in beta. For people it. have it. Thank, Bill, thanks for keeping Amiga alive. <laughs> there are a lot of people out there going, yes, keep the faith, baby. Keep the faith. Thanks for being here. Once again, and by the way, I love you love this? He's got the Amiga ball. Remember that? That was the original Amiga demo, the bouncing ball, and it oh showed how it could multitask because you had 20 of these running on the screen at the That's same right. time. It was very cool. Bill McEwen is president and CEO of Amiga. Amiga lives on. He's showing Amiga's latest embedded comeback. Another person, by the way, who was out here for the embedded forum along with uh, Murray Gelman. So right. I guess that was a fun event. I skipped it. You want even more info? Check out our show notes at thescreensavers.com. We will link you, of course, to all this silliness.